Hello Triglers and welcome back to the channel. We are going to look at UV mapping this time around and if you have any experience in UV mapping uh, you know it's pretty infuriating, it's annoying, you don't really understand even though you've watched a lot of tutorials and whatever and whatever and if you're a beginner this must be way too confusing for you to comprehend. So I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step type of video where I explain what UV mapping is, the workflow you can use to practice and whatnot, and hopefully give you a better understanding of what UV mapping is and the approach you can pretty much take um, when you're presented with a new object, you don't really know how to deal with and whatnot, and what you should think about when you're actually modeling an object about combining stuff or keeping them separate and whatnot. And the only thing I want to say here is upgrade to uh, Maya 2018. The UV mapping is so much better, the men menus are better, there are less bugs and whatnot. So please do that. Uh, it helps a lot with the UV mapping as well. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures from another pro program as well called, called Substance Painter just to kind of visualize the examples of what happens when you actually put a texture on a cube and whatnot. So uh, without any further ado, let's get to it. So instead of just sitting here and, you know, theoretically explaining to you or trying to, you know, get you to visualize what a UV map is, I can pretty much just show you instead. So this is a cube, right? We have a UV map up here in the UV menu, UV editor, and here you go. You can just close this one. This is your UV map. Now, what do you actually need a UV map for? Well, since it's Maya 2018, I think it's the same with the previous ones as well. All the primitive shapes are pretty much UV mapped and done. So I'm just going to put up Substance Painter right here. And just show you what a UV map is, you know, uh, what you're supposed to use it for. So this is the model, right? I can paint directly on the model. And as you see, this is the UV type of thing right here, right? At the bottom. No problem. If I draw a line just across like this, the line goes across. Now, the problem is if you have a really bad UV map and, you know, faces... Uh, on top of each other, drawing on one face like this might result in drawing in a lot of faces at the same time, or if they're not in the appropriate size, the textures just get, well, wonky. An example of that is, let's say if you've got two pieces that are supposed to be next to each other, let's say that this one right here and this one right here are supposed to be next to each other, right? And then if I would keep them separate like this and then draw a line that pretty much goes straight, this, this one, well, not straight, but kind of a curvature, right? This one connects pretty easy. But if you look at the edges like this, that's one. that one is good. If you look at this one, it's kind of weird, right? This one goes, it changes direction, doesn't it? That's really weird. Because this one goes in that direction, but it starts going upwards here. So, so this is what you kind of need to understand with UV mapping, and this is what you use UV mapping for. Of course, I could just write my name here. And this is one of the very many programs you can use to actually uh, put te textures and you know whatnot on. It's called Substance Painter, absolutely amazing program. Um, but yeah, this is UV mapping uh, when it comes to textures and what you use it for. So let's jump back to Maya and I'm actually going to show you um, the layout of the UV maps and a proper setup um, on the um, actual settings within the whole program. There's my name. Cute. So we're back. So we're back in Maya. Uh, just select the object, just make a cube, select the object, go go to UV, UV editor, uh, close this little thing here. So this is the space I am presenting with. Your might, yours might look a little bit different, but what I want you to click uh, is this one. I want you to use this one because if you actually add a 
texture to it, the picture will pretty much just blur everything out. I could just give you an example by doing this quickly. You don't need to remember this. These couple of steps, I'm just doing this to kind of get my point across. Let's just choose a random picture of myself and then do it like that. Now, if you would put up the UV thing here and have it like this, you don't really see the picture, do you? The problem is that you don't have this selected. So if you have this selected, it actually shows you the image. And if I, if I can see the image, of course, I can just adjust it accordingly, right? Ooh, all right. So um, let's just remove all of that. So this is the UV map, right? So a lot of the things in here um, is gonna be new to you. First of all, if you wanna do commands to the UV, you do it within this window. You can't do the same type of commands out here. For an example, if you hold down shift and right click, you see that there's, oh wait, sorry. Hold down right click, select UVs, select the whole thing. Hold down shift and right click and you can see that there's a whole <laughs> bunch of menus that are absolutely new right here. Compared to if you do the same thing out here, it, it gives you, well, not not the same menus, but it's kind of different, all right? So what, what I want you to do now is I want you to shift, right click and go to unfold and then unfold uh, again, but the little box, the little checkbox, right? What that gives you is this window. I want you to copy this the way I've set it up. Um, your, mind, your might look a little bit different, but I want you to copy this exactly what I have in front of you. This one kind of just fix all the problems you have with your model. Uh, this one makes sure that it packs within this space you have. And this one kind of decides the spacing between the well within uh, the space between the different type of parts you have for example let's say if i had um just cut that one and then unfold it let's just say like this is a separate piece right it, this one the pixel thing right here kind of decides the spacing in between these two objects all right, so if I have it like, let's say, say like this, and then I would do, I would just unfold it again. It doesn't show that much right now, but it's, it's more of a spacing right now. And uh, I don't know, did it actually apply? Uh, oh, it did, all right, fair enough. It doesn't show that much because it's pixels. So either way, you can just keep it at one. And of course, if it's too close, you can just move it around yourself. It doesn't matter that much. Either way, when you're done copying this, we're gonna move on to the next part of this guide. So I just threw a bunch of information at you. And of course, a lot of it doesn't make any fucking sense, but just bear with me. I'll reiterate and I'll actually show you. So this is a cube I just made. I'm just gonna go to UV and UV editor, close this one. And I'm going to go through the different types of way you can navigate around this and the tools you absolutely have to use within UV mapping. All right, the first thing is right click within the space, the UV editor, of course, select UVs. This allows you to select the different type of edges, pretty much like vertices. And then you have, of course, edges which is a no brainer. And then you have faces. You also have UV shell, which kind of just selects the whole thing that is connected uh, together. Of course, this is all connected. So it selects the whole thing. So what you need to do and need to learn is when you've actually patched stuff together, don't worry about uh, patching stuff together, cutting and whatnot. I'll show you the actual workflow. We'll uh, dissect things. We'll put things together. Uh, later on in, a, in the tutorial, of course. Let's just say you had something that looked like this, right? What Unfold does, it, it actually shows you the visual representation of how it's supposed to look. 
And if you have the settings like I told you to have, it confines it within the space, right? There you go. It's unfolded. Unfolding is something you have to do all the time. And you'll understand how important it is later on in this tutorial when we actually start dissecting things like, well, a cube and cylinders and whatnot. All right. And to move around this UV editor, a lot of people don't know this. It's like if you hold down Alt and Mouse 3, it kind of allows you to move around all over the place. It allows you to do the same thing if you, if you have the front view, right? Which is pretty annoying because it doesn't allow you to go up and down. Alt mouse three allows you to, well, move it around all over the place. It's a good thing to know generally. All right. So that's pretty much it for navigating and the whole theory behind it. I kind of showed you what UV map, well, what the UV map does and Without any further ado, let's get, let's actually get to working. I'm going to show you the workflow. I'm going to sit down and actually uh, do some UV mapping with you guys. And we're going to do some cues. We're going to do some cylinders. I'm going to show you a more complex object as well. So let's get to it, dudes and dudettes.